Welcome to Core Cutting Today for August 26, 2019. This is the show where I break down some of the biggest stories happening in the world of core cutting right now and give you my opinion on them. If you want to learn more about these stories, in the show notes down below, I'll put a link to each story in the order I talk about them. So you can rebound for yourself. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think of these stories. I'd love to hear from you. If you're new here or if you've been here a while, do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Helps us a lot because it lets YouTube know you enjoy what we're doing. And hopefully we can help you break free from the high cost of cable TV and still watch the shows you enjoy. Well, real quick, we have um, Labor Day happening this week. I know a lot of people are on the road. I know a lot of people, unfortunately, have had school start. Down here in Texas, pretty much everybody started. But I know I grew up in the north where many areas don't start school until after Labor Day. So if that's you, you're trying to get in our last little bit of summer, make sure to download our mobile app. We have an app on iOS, Android, and for Amazon's Fire tablets that allows you to get all the information from our site on your phone, and it even has fewer ads than the mobile version of our website. So check that out as you're enjoying the last little bit of summer here before we get into the doldrums of fall with all the cold and coming up here. So check that out. Also, let me know what you're doing for Labor Day. I'd love to hear. Usually I'm a big barbecue kind of person, Fortunately, earlier this year in a storm, a tree took out our deck in our house. And long story short, it's, we haven't finished building the new one yet. So uh, I may have to bring the grill on the grass this year and do it out in the backyard, actually. But let me know what you're doing for Labor Day this, um, this year. I'd love to hear from you. Even if it's just uh, reading Core Cars news and watching some football. Nothing wrong with that. That's what I kind of hope to be doing this weekend. All right, let's dive into it because we got a lot of deals. Oh, and link to the app in the show notes down below. First link down there if you want to download the app to iOS, Android, and Fire tablets. Quick rundown of some deals from the previous weekend. Roku's having a back to school sale with the Roku Stick and the Roku Stick Plus on sale starting at just $39.99. Now, if you can afford it, even if you don't have a 4K TV, the extra 10 bucks for the Stick Plus is a really good deal, much um, faster uh, streaming player, more importantly, better Wi-Fi. And if you ever upgrade to a 4K TV, it already has 4K HDR built in. I, if you can, I would spend the extra 10 bucks, but the Roku Stick is a good deal. Link in the show notes. Also, if you buy a lot of things on iTunes, or maybe you have Apple uh, Music, or they buy a lot through the App Store, Costco is um, selling $100 iTunes gift cards, $10 off. That's a really good deal. Or get a $25 one with $250 off. Link in the show notes down below if you want to get in on this deal. I often try to get um, sales like this on different gift cards. Amazon does a lot of these. You have to kind of look, go to their today's deals, and then see if they have a tab on the left that says gift cards. Um, there's a local restaurant that often offers them their big national chain. My wife absolutely loves that restaurant, so we often, when I can, buy a $50 gift card for like um, uh, 45 bucks. I think one time it was only 40 bucks. And it's like, hey, next date night, I know where we're going because we have a, a, a gift card there. So check out these deals. Let me know, do you buy gift cards uh, and, that are on sale at places like Costco, Sam's Club, Amazon? Let me know uh, if you have any tricks or suggestions for that. I, I have personally found it to be very helpful. All right, let's dive into it because we have a lot of Disney Plus news this week. Uh, Disney uh, had their D23 Expo, which is their big all things Disney, typically mostly focusing on their movies and the theme parks. Well, this year they, with D Disney Plus coming out, they had a Disney Plus panel and we learned a lot. One of the things we learned was that there will be some limitations on the um, $12.99 bundle, which includes Hulu, ESPN Plus, and Disney Plus. The, um, Limitation here is the Hulu stream will only come with one. So when you're watching Hulu, you can only watch it on one device at a time. Not that long ago, that was the standard rule for Hulu, even though they didn't really enforce it. They now officially allow you to have two streams at once for the Disney Plus or for Hulu. ESPN Plus allows technically five streams, but with this bundle, it's only going to allow you two streams. And Disney Plus will still allow the four streams from our understanding. So just keep that in mind. Now, the great thing about this is you will be able to say, hey, one person's watching Hulu, one person's watching ESPN Plus, and one person's watching Disney um, Plus. So it's not like one stream across all these with the Hulu. No, you can have Hulu running and Disney Plus running and ESPN Plus running. So keep that in mind. 
Also, Disney will be releasing their original shows weekly instead of all at once. So very much like the Hulu model where Handmaid's Tale comes out every week. Disney has announced that, or confirmed, I should say, it wasn't part of the announcement, but it was confirmed that they'll be doing weekly releases. This is some of the news. We learned about some new shows. We got a lot of release dates, so we kind of are starting to get an idea of what's coming out on day one. Uh, just during the um, show, I had a live blog going of all the announcements at the D23 Expo there. I'll put a link to that in the show notes if you want to read everything. I won't break it down, but I did want to cover some of the basics here that I thought was most interesting. But we learned about some new original shows, like uh, um, She-Hawk, she I think it was, her Hawk. I, 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 I blank it out. Somebody leave me a comment down below. Remind me what's the new Hawk show. And I, I, I suddenly am blanking out what is with the female lead. But there's other ones that have been announced, additional details about shows we already knew about, and a lot of just reiteration of what we learned earlier. That yes, 4K will be included. Yes, it will um, include up to four streams and more. So link in the show notes down below. All right, one of the things that's been one of the hottest news happening right now, and oh, and don't forget, let me know what you think of Disney Plus. Any of this change your mind? Any of this make you more likely to subscribe? Let us know. But AT&T has been talking a lot about 5G home internet. A lot of people have talked about, well, that's great, but the range isn't that big. AT&T has now announced plans to use this 3.5 gigahertz band, which is very similar to the band that Wi-Fi uses in some spectrums, and called the Citizens Broadband Radio Service. So a lot like Wi-Fi. I know somebody's going to email me and say, Luke, that's not technically right, and I get that, but oversimplification for people here because we don't need to go into actual um, bandwidth and rules and all that kind of stuff. But this new 3.5 gigahertz um, band is being opened up to be used for things like high-speed internet. at t says they intend to use this band to bring high-speed internet to rural America. It's reportedly supposed to be able to offer a few hundred down speeds over a much broader area than um, 5G. Now 5G, you see that in Austin, it's being, this kind of technology is being used where they run fiber down a main street, they put a, a tower on a light pole, and they can wire an entire neighborhood in a fraction of the time it used to take. I, I mean, at t right now is digging up my neighborhood because they're replacing the old DSL lines with fiber to bring gigabyte internet. That's taken them forever, and there's a lot of upset people because they're ripping up their yards. Now with this system, they won't need to do that. They'll just be able to run it down the main street at the end of my um, road, put a transmitting tower at the, on a light pole there, and then cover my neighborhood in a fraction of the time. This system will be kind of the same idea, but for rural America. And it, it does have some limitations over 5G. It can't offer quite the same speed. But offering two, 300 down is a huge improvement for many small towns. I lived in an area about five years ago where the fastest internet was 10 down DSL. That was the fastest internet where I lived. When I left, it was up to 20 down. We were all partying, right? We can get 20 down internet. This is amazing. This was in 2015. This was after I launched Court Cutters News with just 10 down internet. I was streaming, I was a Court Cutter with just 10 down. It's very possible. So offering a few hundred down is a big improvement. at t is not the only one doing this. Amazon has also requested FCC approval to test um, internet over the system. That test, I believe, is now live in California. will be running until next spring. It's not available. They're not selling it, but they're testing it with their own equipment, own transmitting towers, and more with the hope that this will happen. Now, FCC needs to open this up. It'll take a few years before the FCC approves this transition to use the 3.5 gigahertz um, citizen broadcast radio service band for internet services. So, good news is companies are looking at ways to get high-speed internet out to people who need it. The bad news is this isn't gonna happen overnight. Uh, things like the SpaceX and Amazon space-based internet may come for, or will come first. 5G will be rolling out to more parts first. So keep that in mind. But this is really good news. I love the fact that they are working to offer more high-speed internet options out there. So, and you know, I always get this. There's always gonna be somebody who says, oh, well, there's a downside to this, there's a downside to that. Nothing's gonna be perfect. But competition is good for us. Even if you don't wanna use it. I get this, well, I have gigabyte internet and I'm happy to pay for it. That's great. But you know, if there was competition, if Verizon and AT&T and Amazon and SpaceX were offering internet in your area, 
Wouldn't you think your gigabyte cable internet company would have to say, hey, you know, that's great that we offer very fast internet, but you know, for a lot of people are being very happy with three, four, 500 down wireless internet at a fraction of the cost. A lot of these companies who've been launching have been launching right at about the $50 price point versus 100 for some of these gigabyte services. A lot of these wireless companies are offering data cap free versus data cap. So I think this would even help you, if, even if you don't want to change, because it will force them to maybe say, hey, that data cap, let's get rid of that. Let's get a little bit more competitive on the pricing. Studies have shown in towns with more than two internet providers, three or more, prices go down, speeds go up statistically. Towns with two or fewer um, internet prov or providers, uh, they see the slowest internet speed, but the highest internet bills. So competition is good, keep that in mind. All right, uh, if you were around last year, you know I did a post called five uh, Roku Pro Tips to help you get the most um, from your Roku. We've now released an update with five more Roku Pro Tips covering things like parental controls, accessing your Roku on the go, casting your computer or your Android phone to your Roku, and more. So if you're looking for some pro tips on how to get more out of your Roku, check out the show notes down below. I'll probably do a full video maybe someday about all these tips. But for now, I want you to, um, if you have any questions about your Roku, check out the post down below with tips. If you own a Roku and you have a tip that you think somebody should really know about, keep them legitimate services, that's a promote piracy here. But leave us a comment down below. Let us know like, hey, Everybody, this is a tip I found that was really great. I use my phone, my, the app on my um, phone from Roku to type in passwords and stuff to the keyboard of my phone. That's great. One of the things I hate about streaming players is trying to use the screen to type in passwords. I love a Roku that I can use the Roku app to enter username and passwords. So check that out, link in the show notes, leave us a comment with your tips of the day. All right, uh, that's it for today. Don't forget about the Core Cars News app. If you like it, leave us a five-star rating. I really would appreciate it. But uh, we are working on a brand new one. So hang in there if there's something not quite the way you want it. We'll have a from the ground up built one hopefully soon. But we'll have a, uh, but we do have an app on Android, iOS, and Fire tablets with fewer ads. And all the same news uh, as you will see over at corecarsnews.com. So I hope everybody has a fantastic Labor Day. If I don't see you again until after Labor Day, be safe out there. And enjoy some college football. It was amazing to turn on the TV um, Saturday night. Watch a pretty good college football game of Miami and Florida. Sorry to all the Miami fans. You had a chance there. Sorry to the Arizona fans. What a crazy ending to that game with Hawaii. So you all both had a chance there. It looks like it's going to be a fun season. Longest season in the history of college football. Because we're week zero or zero week. Whatever you want to call it. And the national championship is. It's technically the longest calendar year um, college football season. So we'll have full coverage of that on how to watch any of the biggest events right here at CoreCarsNews.com. Take care, everybody. I'll see you next week. Thanks for your support. I really appreciate it.